Hey, I, I, I have an idea. What if, uh, uh, what if I do were to do like a thumbs up? Go for it, Coop. Okie dokie then. Hello everyone, it's Stooms. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another epic tier list. Oh baby. I watched the show a few weeks ago with my wife and we loved it. We, we love it so far. I can't wait for the next season. I know we're only one season in, but it's still an awesome time to do a cool little tier list. So let's do it again. It's not going to be nearly as long as my Gilmore Girls one but let's get right into it. First, let me explain my rankings. We got S's, the goats, the greatest of all time. We got A, which is pretty litty, great characters with a few flaws. We got B, which is pretty all right. They're pretty good characters, but they got quite a few flaws. C is meh, they're like half good, half bad. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I hate them. D is for derp, and that just means they're not that great. They have a few redeeming moments, but I mostly don't like them. And then F is for dog water. We hate them. They're the worst. This here tier list, I will point out, is a little bit overly detailed. It's literally every single character, all right? Even the ones that pop in for a split second just to like get the story forward in one single episode. I'm not gonna go through every single one of these people, but all of the main mains and a few of the more important funny characters or the more important side characters, I will leave in. We're just gonna go in order from this list. First off, I'm gonna skip this guy. All right, here's an example, because he was just in the show for a brief moment in the episode for the ghoul, because he was going around doing his thing. We got the ghoul's wife, or Cooper's wife, I should say. She is the evil mastermind behind everything. Oh yeah, spoiler alert, by the way, if you haven't seen the show, I'm going to be talking about the show a lot. Sorry, uh, already, already spoilers. I think her twist as a twist villain is pretty cool. That's pretty epic. And as far as being bad, she's definitely bad. She's definitely terrible, but you just hate to see a bad person with no redeeming quality. And we never get that from her. We assume, we assume that she died, right? But she could be still alive, who knows, bro, who knows? I'm gonna put her in C because she goes directly against our man, the ghoul. She's a very interesting, intriguing character, but she's clearly like evil, just out for the money and the profit and willing to sacrifice millions of lives. So she's a, she's a textbook corporate villain. Ah, we got Betty. Now Betty is an interesting one. I'm gonna put her at B. She's also bad. She's working for the same people and she's kind of similar to Cooper's wife because she kind of fools everyone, making them think she's a really good, holy person, but she's actually the mastermind behind everything. Terrible. And uh, the reason why she's better than the wife is, well, we see her more, but also even in her bad self, even being the mastermind, she still seems the most reasonable out of the whole council in the vault. Everyone else is kind of obnoxiously naive while she seems to get it, you know? When people like Norm start to react and are upset with the way they're doing things in the vault, she comes alongside him. She gives him some apple pie or cherry pie or whatever it was and like explains like it's gonna be okay. And she has some wise words to give him even though she's gaslighting everyone. All right, Chet. <laughs> Chet is interesting, bro. Um. I'll put him above Betty, but he's definitely B. He's not He's not an A, just because he's a little weird, you know? We have the whole thing in the beginning where supposedly he, like, does weird stuff with his cousin, the main character, Lucy. But he seems like a sweet person, and he's also got very funny moments. And I just think he's a cool little side character. Doesn't try to rock the boat too much like the others. But, but he's cool. Yeah, he, he's got his cool moments, but he, he stays in B for, for, for being kind of weird, for being kind of sus, you know? Ah, the ghoul. Already to the ghoul, baby. I mean, it goes without saying. Come on now. The ghoul is just so OP. Such a bad off character. His gunslinging, just for his gunslinging skills, if he remained the villain the whole thing, it, w it wouldn't matter. He would still be a super epic character just for being as bad off as he is with his spurs and just everything, but to top it all off, we get a super redeeming story arc from him. We probably know the most about the ghoul by the end of the story, quite frankly, 
and that's extra special because he's such a unique and dynamic character. We get to see his backstory as him being Cooper, an actor who is blindsided by the company who runs the vaults, and then we see, like, I love how throughout the season we see the process that he goes through and why he is the way he is. For for a second there in the earlier episodes, you you think like, hey, this this ghoul guy, he's pretty, he's a badass, but he's he's bad, you know. He's really like kind of torturing Lucy to an extent and just out to kind of murder everyone but once you see his intent and once you see the reason why he is the way he is you're like dang let's go ghoul and you're like a hundred percent team ghoul by the end of the series and the way they cap it off and reveal everything with the big twist uh just the ghoul comes out looking so freaking epic already so much more epic than he already was which he already was super duper epic as a baddie and he you know what i'll he, he, he's a good father you know you see in his backstory with his daughter that he's super sweet he cares so much and he didn't even want to spy on his wife he was so good like he just didn't want to he didn't want to get into that because he felt like what he was doing was wrong but then once he found out that his wife was actually a master manipulator and like evil person he was like oh sheesh so it's probably a good thing he found out about it because she obviously was keeping it from him but yeah just in all ways good and then the world and his experience with his wife definitely tarnished him and he became more soulless but for good reason you know and all the people he kills you know we it's fine they're they're all terrible people so like his intentions were always good you think he's bad for a moment but then he comes back so he for a moment he's an anti-villain but then at the end he's a freaking hero so just his whole story arc throughout the show is 10 out of 10 so good we love the ghoul why why wouldn't you love the ghoul come on now all right we got dane he's pretty cool he's not in it too much i think we'll put him i think we'll put him at the bottom of the b tier you know it kind of sucks to know that he went out of his way to, like, injure himself just because he was afraid to go out in the wilds. Like, that's kind of a lame move. But in their situation, with the way it is, and with, like, you can't really blame him. You can't really blame anyone there. You can't really blame Maximus for the way they act and for the way it is because it's all a crooked system, just like with Cooper's wife. The head, the the oracle guy, he's just like a horrible master who just pretty much slave drives them, quite frankly. And even for the the Tituses, even for the machine gun guys, they don't have that great of a life, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just kind of brutal living, and if he wants to stay safe in his little camp with all the other people who aren't squires, yeah, that's that's cool, and uh, I like his friendship with Maximus. That was special, but you know, you know, not 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 a tier just because of that lame move to just avoid it all. And like, he's actually pretty brave for uh, totally mutilating his leg because that that's that's got some, you got some guts there, like literally. <laughs> all right, we got the doctor. This dude is a head. The majority of the show, but. I don't know, I like him. It, it's hard to tell what his particular goal was. Like, I understood why everyone was after him, but I wasn't, I don't remember the reason why he injected that super powerful thing in his brain or whatever. I, I wasn't sure what his game was, where he came from, really, because I guess we just don't get that much time from him. But he he ends up being good he ends up realizing his purpose when he has that power and when the other doctor tries to take him out you know so i think that i think that was pretty cool i think i think he goes just below betty yeah on the b tier yeah not a bad character at all just kind of mysterious and i feel like i i would want to know more and he seems pretty wise you know when he helps out lucy at first and yeah it, it's interesting. He's kind of like the, the crux of the show, if you think about it. Everyone's after his head for the longest time. Like, every single group is after this guy. The Maximus's group, Lucy to find her father, the ghoul, 
so that he can... I don't know if he wanted to help Moldaver after all, but he did want it, the, you know, justice to come to, to the people that ran the vault. Moldaver wanted it. The vault wanted it. Like, everyone was after him. So that, that was very interesting, but I just wish we knew more of his history, is all I'm saying. Ooh, we got the good boy. We got the good boy. <coughs> Solid A tier, you know. What is his character? We, we don't know. He's a doggo, but he's a sweet little doggo and he's loyal. The only reason why he's not S tier is probably because he, he's a doggo and we don't know his complete character, but he's a good boy. So he gets above everyone in B tier and he's just, he's awesome. We love, we love little doggo. He stays at the doctor's side super lo loyally and then the ghoul even shoots him and because the ghoul also healed him, he remained loyal to the ghoul and he was sweet and he was a very um, good doggo and took out a lot of baddies, you know? So he, he was he was pretty cool. We love the little doggos. Ooh, this dude. Honestly, I'm allowed to hate this guy, okay? what a, Out of all the master manipulators, this guy is the most manipulative. The fact that we're following Lucy on this journey and her whole goal is to save her father because he was brutally kidnapped by Moldaver and her, her crew, which, who are supposedly bad. But they're not, obviously, at the end of the show. But then her realizing that her father literally ruined her whole life, everything she could have had, just to keep the company going, and his greed again. All the baddies in here are greedy, uh, just power and money hungry. And it was so sad to see her reaction and what he did and how much he didn't care. He's so cold. And what a horrible, horrible person. Like, it's your own daughter, dude. And you murdered her mother, your wife, to promote your greed. And it's just, it was so sad to see. He is a, what an awful, awful person in respects to our perspective on the show and just how much we followed Lucy and how much it meant to her to rescue him and then knowing that he's just the worst person on the planet like gah what a terrible person ooh Moldaver very interesting super unique character the twist on her is very interesting I'll put her right below Chet she's definitely not a funny character and I, you know me I love funniness so Chet has has a one up on that but the story about her and how we find out that she's actually the hero in this story it is pretty cool how they did it. It's, it's pretty cool. And she does a good job convincing Lucy that her father is a terrible person, which is a plus. And I also found it super interesting that the ghoul actually did not agree with her. He thought she was, you know, reaching. She thought she was a uh, like conspiracy theorist. But then we find out that at the end, her and the ghoul are on the exact same side. And I thought that was very interesting. And just her part in the whole twist was done so well in the show. And yeah, she's a pretty, pretty unique character. And, she, you know, Lucy all along thought she was bad for kidnapping her dad and bringing in all those raiders to take out some of the vault people but from Moldaver's perspective all the vault people are bad so you see both sides of the coin all right who is next looks like Lucy oh my gosh Lucy hmm good boy Lucy good boy Lucy um um see the thing about good boy is he never did anything wrong to make his character worse. So good good boy, just above Lucy here. <laughs> Lucy is super cool. I really like her character, super naive, understand, understandably so, and just wants what's best for the world. Like she's the one person throughout the series who just isn't necessarily bad at all in any way. She's pure hearted and she just wants to find her dad. She feels that what's been done to her family in the vault and what's been done to her dad is wrong. She has every right to feel that way. And she's just a really sweet person, you know? And just her little quote, okie dokie, you know? She's just, uh, like, her whole character and the way she's played out throughout the series is so special to me. And 
It was so sad seeing her in shock at the end, knowing that her father is what caused all this damage. Like, gosh dang, that sucks. A very sad moment. And her biggest flaw was not stopping Maximus from being her father. Like, both my wife and I in that moment when she froze up and was just in shock and Maximus was trying to get her attention, he didn't know that her dad was bad yet, but she snaps out of her shock the moment he lifts up the cage and lets her evil father out. And then, of course, there's a tech suit nearby and her father gets in it and almost kills Maximus. Like, ugh, you know, like, bro has plot armor to keep the seasons going fine, but gosh, it's excruciating. Like, just snap out of it. You, you were in shock for a long time, and then Maximus comes up, and you don't rush to stop him. You, If you're that much in so shock and you feel that bad about it, just, just stop him from feeding your father, please. It would have been so satisfying. But no, we got to keep the series going. I get it, and I'm looking forward to it. Don't get me wrong, but gosh, would have felt so good if they both realized it, and Maximus is the one who, like, takes him out for literally destroying his entire family, where, and he's, like, the only survivor. Like, <laughs> good golly. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was her one big flaw. I, uh, other than that, I don't think I disliked her at any other moment, just because we, the, her, her contrast of her character with all the other characters and how fricked up the world is fits perfectly with the show it's comedic it's interesting yeah and i think she did an incredible job awesome awesome and when i watched this show that's when i found out that she was the voice of jinx and i was like dang this actress is on the up and coming she's gonna do great things she's already done two amazing things in shows so i'm just looking forward to see what else she does she's a great incredible actress all right maximus dude maximus all right all right i really enjoyed watching maximus and his story and him fumbling around through the world just everything about it i would be very similar i would be a guy trying his best and making a lot of little mistakes and feeling inadequate to take care of them, but just try, trying his best. And I, I just, I found his character just so relatable, super relatable. And that's why I loved him so much. Uh, super funny. And uh, one of my favorite moments with him is when he gets in the tech suit and pretends to be Titus and he gets with Thaddeus and they form this like bromance and stuff. Like, ah, dude. So funny. I loved it. And his story is really sad too. He doesn't take moments to cry. He doesn't take moments of shock. But if you look past all the comedic value that he brings, like, man, that, that's rough. He wakes up in like a protective, I don't know, panic room sort of object. And he finds his entire world, his entire family, everything just destroyed. And the only thing there with him is the knight. Knight in shining armor for him. And uh, quote unquote rescues him. But we find out later it doesn't rescue him. It actually puts him in a like little prison. Where he has to clean poop every day. And he's treated terribly. Like <laughs> man. So it's a, it's a very sad story. But you know, he's redeemed and he ends up being on top of the knights, which is actually what he doesn't want. And we're sad about it too. We find out that he gets knocked out. Lucy goes with the ghoul and he's on his own, but Dane and all of his crew from his group make him the knight because he defeated Moldaver, I think it was. And he secured the compound, you know? So he's in good standing and I'm looking forward to see what he does. Like, he's he's in the most intriguing position to me to see how he gets out of the situation. Because it's clear he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be the head of the, of the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood. Gosh, I just now remembered the name of the group. I'm so bad, dude. But, yeah. just I just thought he was super funny. A very likable character. Very understandable character. His dynamic with Lucy is so sweet. And I love how it sparks a little love story. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good stuff. We love to see it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't have much else to say. He's not as good as the ghoul, because he's not bad off, you know? The ghoul, come on, it's ghoul. And Walton Goggins, I love that actor too, so. But he is S tier for me. I don't see hardly any, I don't really see any flaws, really, in Maximus. Just in, it, from my perspective, he's a very flawed person, but to me as a character, they're not flaws that make me dislike the character. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm rambling. Norm, my man. Okay. We like Norm. Norm is very cool. Norm. Uh, the thing is about Norm, his situation, I can't like him more than Lucy because he doesn't even leave the vault. But I guess from his perspective, he, he can't leave the vault. But I like his suspicions. I like his sarcasm in a lot of situations. And he's the only one really thinking. Like even Chet agrees with him but he's like oh i'm gonna stay out of that i'm not gonna poke the bear so to speak but norm doesn't care he's brave he goes after it the best he can and he discovers that it's all super rigged vault 31 has been controlling everything and it's because of this guy bert or whatever his name is also a very relatable character uh knowing that he kind of acted as a coward in the scene where you know they were murdering everyone and he feels bad about it, him going through that, but him trying his best to make the most out of it and make it better by investigating what is really going on. And that's extra special. And I'm interested to find out what happens to him too, because as far as we know, he's locked in that vault for years and years with brain Bert. So it's not looking good for Norm. I hope he gets out of it. I really liked his character and he really held the other half of the story. Him leading the just the story arc in the vault was done really well. And he's a pretty cool actor. I haven't seen him in too much other stuff. I think he's from Nickelodeon initially, but he did it really well. I, I really liked his character. Ah, the doctor, the skeevy weirdo doctor, dude. Oh my gosh. Okay, as far as comedic relief and just being a random character that gives that for us, just a really funny random guy that you don't see very much, I think he's the best. So I'm gonna put him at the bottom of the A tier just because he's so out of pocket. And we in, we get introduced to him by <laughs> by some other guy claiming that he's he's fricking his chickens. Like it's just so weird and so that's super grotesque, I know, but it's just so out of pocket that it makes me laugh. You know, it's just like it's so ridic he's so ridiculous. This doctor is so ridiculous. And it's interesting to me that he actually gives Thaddeus a serum that heals him. He actually heals. He turns him into a ghoul, of course, but <laughs> he, he's an actual doctor. He actually heals people. So I just thought that was interesting, but super weird dude, super pale, giant forehead, weird top hat, super ghetto looking, running around with his sketchy briefcase. <laughs> he's just funny. Thaddeus. Thaddeus, Thaddeus. Okay, I really liked Thaddeus, but then when he betrayed Maximus just for finding out that he wasn't Titus underneath the suit. Like, come on, man. You're in a situation where you remember what you did to Maximus and being joining the bullies, but you end up betraying him anyways, even though, like, you know the system is corrupt? Like, come on, man. But other than that, like I said, one of my favorite moments in the entire show was the bromance between Thaddeus and Maximus. It was just so, like, funny. And when they find the head, they're just, like, cheering, like, yeah, let's go! Like, I just think Thaddeus is so memeable. And then when he gets injured, <laughs> his foot is literally, like, just like disgusting and he's just like oh that's that's not good i better get that fixed like he's just so nonchalant about it it's like bruh your foot is literally like gone and you're just casually talking about it <laughs> like yeah I, I i loved his comedy comedic relief and uh his dynamic in the story it, it was cool but don't betray my boy maximus come on now ah the cyclops i'm just gonna call him the cyclops Again, very good comedic relief moment. You just take a look at this guy and knowing that he's been in so many funny moments, being in Rick and Morty and Hot Rod, that's where I remember him from the most. That was one of the funniest movies of all time. Uh, it's just hilarious seeing him in this role as the super creepy ghetto looking Cyclops. <laughs> like, bruh, it's so funny. Um, 
I'll put them above Moldaver because I just thought that was super, super funny. You know me and funniness. I really like it. But yeah, out of everyone else, these are just like random characters that get killed off or don't really say anything. So I think that's the tier list right here. This is the tier list, folks. Uh, and as far as me rating the show, I'm going to give it a solid A uh, right at the same level as a doggo. Liked it as much as the doggo. It was a great show. I know it's ongoing. It's, there's only been one season, and I don't know how these characters are going to change throughout the series. But I really liked it. It's a really well done show. Uh, Amazon Prime has been killing it lately. I'm just now re-watching all of the boys because season four is coming out and boy am i so excited dude one of my favorite shows of all time uh, we will definitely do a tier list on that later after i finish the show but for now this is my tier list for the fallout tv series and i think it's pretty solid we got only two s tiers there's not too many characters but that's understandable we got a huge b bracket only one F, very few hated characters here, and these people are hardly in the show anyway, so it's not like I actively hate them, it's just for what they are in the show for those brief moments, it's just like, they're not likable. And then everyone else, pretty solid. I, I liked, I pretty much liked all the main characters who got more than one blip in an episode's worth of screen time, pretty much. So yeah, solid show. Very good, nine out of 10. That's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Okie dokie then. Bye bye.